people. If you remember in um, Galatians chapter 1, it's what we've been using for the scripture talk, pardon me, chapter 3, verse 1. We were using for a scripture text <clears throat> where Paul writing to the Galatians, he said, Oh foolish Galatians, who has wrongly influenced you to disobey the truth? In the midst and before your eyes, Jesus Christ was delivered, crucified. In other words, I came in and I preached you a pure message, Jesus Christ, and Him crucified. That's what you need for salvation. <clears throat> and now... After I've left, someone else has come in, some religious people with their own doctrine. And they are changing the message. <laughs> They're telling you that it takes something beside Jesus, something in addition to Jesus. And I'm going to tell you right at the outset, it's Jesus plus nothing. If he didn't do it, you can forget it. You're in trouble. But the bottom line is he did do it. But the thing that got my attention was that they were under influence. In other words, they had a help in being led astray. They just didn't go there on their own. And if you think about it, this is the way it is today. A lot of people have help in being led astray. And the status quo church has been the major help in leading people astray. And that's that. The ones that are supposed to be leading people to Jesus are actually leading people away from Jesus while they talk about Jesus. Sort of interesting. We talk about God, but we don't want people to get into an intimate relationship with God. If they get into an intimate relationship with God, then it can expose the deception of religion. And that was the problem in Jesus' day with the religious elite um, and they uh, he was come he came on the scene telling the truth and they didn't want to hear the truth they couldn't accept the truth and so what do you do if you can't accept it kill it get it out of the way the problem is you can't kill truth it keeps coming back you understand and so we talked about various influences that people are under. You know, obviously a worldly influence. A person can be under a godly influence or divine influence. Or you can be influenced by people, and all of us have, <coughs> have been. But you're influenced by what you subject yourself to. And this is so simple that it just goes over most people's heads. And they don't even hear what the Lord's saying to them is that you control the influence that you're under. See, it's, it's your, your influence. Sometimes a person where there's a strong uh, dominant authority that a person can't do anything about, such as a child being brought up in a cert, certain atmosphere, that, that's one thing. But that's, that's the exception to the rule, okay? And then when that child grows up, to uh, a legal age and comes to knowledge of the truth, that child makes a choice whether it stays under that influence or whether it comes out from under that influence. You just have to be bold enough to take the step to come out from under it. But we're all influenced by choice. Most people choose the influence to which they subject themselves to. And I've seen this over the years, and, and it used to, uh, I used to think it was funny, now it's pathetic. But back, I don't know, probably 40 years ago or better, uh, how these uh, women would watch these soap operas and then men got into it, watching these soap operas. And I mean, to the point that it, it affected them emotionally. They, somebody die or somebody do whatever and, and they'll just be crying. And I remember one person coming in and... <laughs> And his wife was crying, and they said, what in the world's wrong with you? And she said something about so-and-so died or something. He said, who in the world is that? I don't even know them. They come to find out it was a TV character. But yet it had such influence on that person's life that it affected them emotionally. It, what you read influences you. 
Yeah, I don't care if it's the newspaper, if it's a comic book, or if it's the Bible. Whatever you read influences you. And you're choosing what you subject yourself to. I choose what I read. You understand? I choose what I watch, what I, what I listen to. I choose that. And I'm learning to be extremely selective. Because most of what the people of the world are subjected to are ideas of the world that will not take you to God, but will actually prevent you from getting there or lead you away from God. You're on a journey, but you're just circling the mountain. You're never, you're never ascending. It's just circling and just circling, just circling. And I believe the church has been there long enough that we need to start ascending and uh, getting ourselves subjected to the right thing. If you subject yourself to the world, the world's going to influence you. Simple as that. I'll give you a good example. You, you can, I mean, you can be as fine as rain, everything going well, and you can go to, you can go to a ball game or any kind of sporting event. And you let a bad call be made or something done, and you know what it does? It gets you riled up. It starts stirring up works of the flesh on the inside of you, which we're told to put those down. We're told to produce the fruit of the Spirit. But on the other hand, if you subject yourself to the things of God, to divine influence, what will come out of you, the fruit, <coughs> excuse me, the fruit of the Spirit will be produced instead of the works of the flesh. You follow me? I mean, it's pretty simple, isn't it? I mean, very, very basic, really. Uh, if you subject yourself to the desires of your family, you'll be influenced by your family. Now, don't stone me. Okay, just listen to me. Many people, and I've had, I've had pastors to say to me that God had spoken to them to do a certain thing in the church and they couldn't do it because their wife didn't agree with it. Now, you don't want to tell me that because I'm going to counter that with you don't have a choice. Did you telling me that you would choose a human being over the God who created you? You're not going to stand before your wife in judgment. It's the Lord of all the earth that you're going to stand before in judgment. And I highly recommend that you obey God and pray for your wife. You understand? Because she's missing God. You with me? And it's not just wives. I mean, a husband can miss God too. Don't, don't misunderstand. But it's amazing how much influence families have over people's lives. I will tell you right now, and, and, and a lot of you guys knew my mom, some of you knew my dad. They were, they were fine, fine people. God, they, they loved God. But the Lord had given me revelation and spoken things to me that... Uh, Mom didn't agree with. And uh, we've had some discussions. And I finally, I, I, I had to tell her to back off. I'm going to obey God. And we'll just let the chips fall where they may. And I tried to get the point across to her that I wasn't in a popularity contest. And this was not a political game to me. I quit work, secular work, to pursue God, not to be religious. You understand? That's how much impact that had on my life, and my mind hasn't changed. But it's amazing how families will keep members of families out of church, or how they'll influence them, influence them to stay in a church that's dead as a cemetery. And keep you there to where you live your life and die without any spiritual growth. And of course, those people would, would say, you know, they love God, and superficially, they love God. But Jesus said, if you're going to be my disciple, you have to forsake all, even yourself. Now, that's the tough one. How can I forsake myself? I, 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 I. That's, that's used a lot in our vocabulary. 
that we want this, we want that. But what if we would uh, start consulting God in what God wants out of our lives? What do you want to do with this body? I've come to the conclusion by the scriptures <clears throat> that my spirit and my body, the house that my spirit lives in, have been bought and paid for. And because of that, I no longer have ownership. I do have stewardship. And there's a difference between stewardship and ownership. I'm to manage what God owns. You with me? Because when you're born again, you're bought by the blood of Jesus. Therefore glorify God in your spirit and your body, which are the Lord's, is what the scriptures say. But then I manage this. And God doesn't micromanage. You understand, when He delegates, He delegates. But there is an accountability that goes with that delegation of authority. You with me? And so, what have I done with what God has given me the authority over? Have I managed this body well? Now, let me... Let me uh, Clarify what I mean by managing the body. I'm talking about using the body for the work of the Lord. Using the body to glorify God. You with me? Not stroking the flesh and pampering the flesh and, uh, you know, trying to be in such physical shape and ageless that when you look at you in the casket, they say, don't they look good? Uh, it's all going to rot, you understand. But it's amazing how much attention we put in the wrong direction and how little attention we put in the right direction. And I'm learning that I'm, I'm the manager of this. Now what am I going to do with what God has given me? I can select it uh, or I can subject this body to religion, which all of us probably at some point in time in our life were subjected to religion. To the point that you believed the way they believed and nobody could change your mind. Am I the only one that's ever been that way? No. But what is it? It's because that's what I stayed subjected to. I could have chosen to study the Bible. But you know, back, back in those days, instead of, like, they had me teaching Sunday school. <clears throat> I wouldn't study the Bible. I would study the quarterly, the commentary that they gave you that went with the quarterly. So all I was doing all those years is just studying some man's opinion and never coming to the knowledge of truth. Just believing what somebody else had imposed on me by my choice. I chose to go under that influence, you understand. And thank God for His faithfulness and His mercy to open my eyes to where I realized that a lot of the things that were being taught, that I was being taught, that, that I was teaching, were not the Word of God. It was the opinion of man, and man's opinion was wrong. And Scripture will define Scripture. Scripture reveals Scripture. And if you look at things, then you, you start processing that the Spirit of God will bring a scripture to your mind, and you can see you've been under wrong influence. So what do I do? Do I stay under that wrong influence? Or do I bail out? And I'm going to tell you it's time for the body of Christ to bail out. We've been under wrong influence long enough. We've been under the influence of the world long enough. We've let the flesh dominate our lives long enough. And it's time for the Spirit of God to stand up on the inside of us and we let Jesus live His life in this body that belongs to Him. Does that make sense to you? Okay. If you subject yourself to religious traditions, you're going to be influenced by religious tradition. You know, when Jesus walked the earth, the, it had gotten so out of hand 
that the Pharisees had made rules upon rules. It's not that Jesus violated the word of God. It's not that his disciples violated the word of God. But they violated the traditions of the elders. Why, he didn't wash his hands before he ate. And we've got to go through all this ceremonial stuff with, with the cleansing of the pots and the pans. And Jesus says, that's all natural. That's of the flesh. That has nothing to do with spirit. That's not defiling a person. What defiles a person is coming out of the heart. What's in the core of you being? And if you haven't had a nature change to where the divine nature of God is living on the inside of you, your nature is defiling you understand? Because it's an it's a evil-influenced nature influenced by the world. If you subject yourself to the Word and Spirit of God, you'll be influenced by God. Now think about this, and I don't want you to answer it. But if you would compare, in, a, in any given day, the time you spend in the Word of God, meditating on the things of God, versus the time you spend taking care of business and all the other stuff. What percent of time would God have? You follow me? Then what influence are we under? The only way I can become more influenced by God is to spend more time with God. And I'm not talking about locking yourself in a closet, becoming a hermit, or going into a cave, or being a monk. I'm talking about including God in everything you do all during the day to where... It doesn't matter if you're working on something or whatever, that you include God. You're talking with God. You keep a relationship with God. What you're doing is developing to the point that you're relying on the Spirit rather than on the flesh. How many times have we gone about doing things? We've done it before. Well, I don't need God. I did this yesterday. I know how to do it today. But you may have a problem today you didn't have yesterday. And I'm learning that I need Him every day, so I need to stay under the influence of His Word and His Spirit to where I am not violating Him. And whatever I do, that I'm not violating Him. Which, which influence do you choose? Don't answer. But just ask yourself, what influences me the most? Is what's influencing me bringing me into a greater intimacy with the Lord? Or is it hindering intimacy with the Lord? Do you, you follow me? And be honest. Be honest with yourself. Because you're the only one that knows the answer to that, but you can do something about it. Now here's the thing. Intoxication affects behavior. How many of you know that? I'm not going to ask you how many of you have ever been drunk. I'm going to ask you how many of you have ever seen a drunk. What happens? One who's intoxicated acts differently. Would you say so? Okay. So if you're under the influence of something, it dramatically changes your behavior. I've seen some stupid stuff done from people that were drunk. That wouldn't have dared done those things had they been sober. You understand? But what is, the influence they were under was affecting them in such a dramatic way that, I mean, they risked their life uh, of doing some, some crazy things. Uh, an intoxicated person uh, loses control to whatever degree of motor skills and rationality. You with me? That's why, that's why when a, a, the police officer stops a, a, a person that they suspect has been drinking. Do you ever see one of them try to walk a line? It's, it's hilarious really to watch some of them. Uh, they've only had one drink or whatever, but uh, you know, they're... Their, their leg and foot won't go where they want it to go. Or, or, or they can't touch their nose with their finger or whatever. What's happening? That influence has affected their skills, their behavior. 
Now, I'm, I'm going somewhere with this. I'm just talking about the natural, but really what I'm talking about is the spirit. Okay, and that's the, the type influence. If you observe one who's under any type of influence, you'll find that their natural tendencies change. For instance, you, for, let's look at it from a positive way in, in ministry. When the Spirit of God comes on a person and uh, <clears throat> instructs that person to do a certain thing, it may, be, uh, it may be out there and some people say, he's crazy. But let's look at the life of Jesus. Jesus was under the influence of his Father all the time he was on earth. His own family thought he was deranged. They went to get the boy. You understand? His mama and his brothers because they thought he was crazy. Why? Because he was doing things that other people didn't do. I mean, like spit in the dirt and make mud and put it on somebody's eyes and get them healed of blindness. Or heal in deaf ears or raise just in, in or just stop a funeral procession and raise the dead. How many of you know that's not the ordinary thing today? So why did he do that? He was under strong influence. Are you with me? And when you come under the strong influence of the Lord, then you'll, you'll start doing things that your natural mind does not agree with. Follow me? Okay, I hope you absorb it, as you. Uh, anyway, God wants us under His influence. See, the world will do the same thing. The world will bring you under an influence to cause you to do some crazy stuff. You with me? But, you know, fights are caused by influence. Domestic violence is caused by influence. You name any crime, anything, it's caused by an influence. And you can't tell me that anyone that's under the influence of God is going to follow those patterns that will happen. And so something's influenced. Well, we have a responsibility as a church to start influencing people for the Lord to where uh, they act differently. You know, when before I was born again, I acted a certain way. But when God transformed my life, my acting, my thinking, my talking changed. Do you understand? As Paul would say it, the old man died. Why? He came off from under that influence of death. He came under the influence of eternal life, under the influence of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so it started affecting every part of my being. We're all influenced. There's not a person in this room that's not under the influence of something. That's why you have to be extremely cautious not to let others influence you into doing anything other than what has God has ordained you to do or to be. How many parents have influenced their children to go in a direction that God didn't ordain? Go for the money. Do you understand? Never caring about why God put you on the planet. You with me? If I'd gone for the money, I wouldn't be in the ministry. I know some ministers went for the money into ministry, but that's shysters. They're not people under the influence of God. You with me? Be cautious how you influence other people. Don't influence them to do something God doesn't want them to do. It's like Peter. Uh, Jesus says, you know, he's got to go to Jerusalem and suffer and uh, be killed and all that. Peter, no, you, no, no, that's not going to happen to you. Here's his good friend trying to influence him to disobey God. 
to miss His purpose for coming on earth. And I can tell you that you will have friends that will also try to influence you to miss God. Not, they're not doing it maliciously. They didn't hear what God told you. Only you heard that. You understand? When God spoke to me about leaving sacred work, going to ministry, the only person that heard that was me. Sure, he didn't hear a thing other than me say it was time to leave secular work. And she said, how do you know? I said, God spoke to me. And she said, you'd better be sure it's God. Well, that's wise. But I was sure. You understand? So you let that voice of the Lord have a greater influence over you than any voices around you. Guard your heart with all diligence. Don't subject yourself to anything, everything. I've, I've got to where I, if I just try to avoid uh, idle conversation and all these jokes and all this type of stuff. I just block it out. In my mind, while that's going on, I just talk to the Lord or sing or in my head or whatever to try to uh, prevent those things from having influence on my life. How many of you like music, songs? How many times do you hear songs in your head? It's influencing you. You understand? It can influence you in a positive way or it can influence you in a negative way depending on what you're listening to. Let's not become intoxicated with the world or anything that pertains to the world. Let's get our eyes off of the world. How long are you going to live? You don't know. So if you live to be 100, what's the big deal? Would you compare that to eternity? And what we're doing here is going to have a, 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 a dramatic effect on eternity. Where we are and what we do. And I don't know a whole lot about that other than just some bits and pieces here that I know I will be judged by my works. According to 1 Corinthians, the third chapter. Now whether I get live eternally with the Lord or separated with the Lord is determined by whether or not my name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. So there's a difference. You can, you can uh, look, just humor me as I say this right, you can make heaven by the skin of your teeth and not have one reward when you get on the other side. You with me? Or we could be doing the work of the Lord here and laying up treasure in heaven through obedience. Now what I do, I don't do for reward. That never crosses my mind. You know, God, I've done this, and God, I've done that. I'm just thankful and trying to stay sober in the, in the fact that I am a very fortunate person that God would even give me the time of day to where He would introduce Himself to me so that I could have eternal life. You with me? Stay under that influence. Become intoxicated with the Holy Spirit. Be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit of God. Talk to yourself or teach others with psalms, hymns, spiritual songs. Make melody in your heart to the Lord. Don't wait for somebody else to do it for you. You do it. Then you're under the influence of the Lord. And if you're under the influence of the Holy Spirit, uh, you'll, you'll say and do things you wouldn't naturally do. You understand, I've said and done a lot of things that I wouldn't naturally do. And I actually have asked myself what I said after I got through. But I knew it was God. You understand, God doesn't miss it. Men can, but God doesn't. Divine influence will affect your thinking, it'll affect your speech, it'll affect your actions, but it'll affect them in a very positive way. People will be helped, not harmed by God's influence.
You understand? If you're high on the Holy Spirit, you won't hurt anybody. You'll help somebody because it has a contagious effect. God desires for all of us to come under the influence of His Word and Spirit for the benefit of all concerned. Why should I be subjected to the Word and Spirit? So that God can live His life through me, which would affect other people's lives. To get them to subject themselves. What would happen if everybody would just subject themselves to the ways and will of God? The world you wouldn't recognize. You understand? There would be such a dramatic change. And thank God where I'm going is going to be that different. And where it's not going to be all the stuff that you're seeing every day. Why? Because people have chosen to come under the influence of the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember that dominant thoughts of influence actions, good or bad. You sit around and think about it. You think yourself happy. You think yourself mad. You understand? And so when that negative thought gets in there, get on top of it. Get on top of it in a hurry. Or you find yourself doing some things you'll regret later on or saying things you wish you wouldn't have said. It's obvious we're in the world, but Jesus said that we're not of the world, which simply means that we're not to let the world influence us, but we're to be influenced from the inside rather than the outside. You follow me? There's some things going on inside me, and we'll, you know, a lot of these things take time to develop. But there's a real distinction between the inner man and the outward man. The battle that Jesus won to where he defeated Satan was with the inner man, with the nature. You with me? And so if we live following the new nature, we live in victory. It's when I step over here and start listening to the old nature that I get in trouble. You understand? Start thinking wrong, saying wrong, doing wrong, all this kind of stuff. People who influence other people to, to follow God are giving godly influence. People who influence other people to follow the ways of the world are giving worldly influence. So you have to think about this. You know, everybody's a counselor. <laughs> Everybody wants to give you some advice, a piece of their mind, or whatever. But would God agree with your advice? That's what you have to ask yourself. Before you start advising someone, screen it, filter it through the Word of God. Does this agree with God? Would God give that person this counsel? If not, I don't need to be giving them that counsel. But I need to be influenced them in the way the Lord wants them influenced. If it's influence in flesh to do some kind of ungodly or devious deed, that's demonic influence. And we have a lot of that going on today right here in this area. Divine influence comes from the inside. These other influences come from the outside. They appeal to the flesh. God will never appeal to your flesh. If God's talking to you, it's going to be in inside it won't have a thing to do with your flesh it'll have to do with the real person the occupant of the house so we have to observe our thoughts and our actions in order to avoid ungodly influence i think about solomon and david david made some bad choices but david's heart was always to god but unlike his father david Solomon, the wisest man on earth, imagine that, made some seriously bad choices and actually caused the kingdom to be torn from him over a bad choice. He let people influence him to turn away from God. We are just reading last night, as a matter of fact, that his wife, 700 wives who were princesses, 300 concubines, and it says as he got older, they turned him away from God. He built a, this idol to this God, to this God, to this God, 
and started worshiping these other gods. He forsook the God of his youth. He didn't do what his daddy told him to do. He, he came out from under the influence of a man after God's own heart and came under the influence of people who did not have a heart for God. And it cost him. It'll cost you, it'll cost anybody. So we have to observe what we're listening to. Just, just process it. So say, I don't need to be listening to this. Or I don't need to be reading this or whatever. Overcome any imposed influence on you. If you have an opportunity to get off from under it, get off from under it. Understand. Don't do anything stupid or illegal. Don't misunderstand me. But don't, don't stay under an imposed influence when you can do something about it. We choose what influences us. I choose whether or not I read the Bible. I choose whether or not I read godly material. I choose what I watch. And I'm getting more and more selective. And I'm finding that there's fewer preachers that I can even listen to because they're not telling the truth. It's just rhetoric, religious stuff. I want somebody telling me something that'll make me grow. Provoke me to think rightly. Divine influence. That'll affect my thinking. That'll affect my speech. That'll affect my actions in a positive way. People will be helped as a result of it. And they won't be harmed by divine influence. So when we talk about under the influence, that's generally uh, used in a negative sense, isn't it? If I just say, he was under the influence, you would immediately think I was, I was referring to alcohol or drugs or something. But I could just as easily say, he was under the influence of the Holy Spirit. I just say, why did he do what he did? Because he was under the influence. You with me? And that's what the world should be saying in the body of Christ. They should be saying that the body of Christ is under the influence of the Spirit of God. From the beginning, God wanted humanity to be under His influence. But, obviously, the first man and woman chose a different influence. They chose to allow the outward to take precedence over what they knew was right on the inside. And that's why we're in the mess we're in today. Because of their choice. But, once Jesus has redeemed humanity, we all go back to that Garden of Eden. Now it's not Adam's fault. It's not the woman's fault. It's what choices I make. That determines my direction of life. See, God never changed His mind with the influence. That's why He sent Jesus to the world to undo what Satan had done. And I'll just briefly say this. You may hear things later on about it. But Satan is already defeated. You understand? Well, that, was, that was done in the spirit world. It's not that he's going to be. He hasn't been thrown into the lake of fire yet. 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 But that's the sentence. Okay? But there's some things that are going to, that have a course to run before that occurs. So the way he operates today is through suggestion or enticement. And it's always to the flesh. Satan can't make you do anything. He has no authority. You understand? Unless you yield the authority you have to him. He can't make you think a certain way. He can't make you act a certain way. We think and act by choice. And that is by what we're listening to and subjecting ourselves to. So which influence are you going to choose? You're going to go with the inward man? The Word and Spirit of God will affect the inward man. Now if you'll be honest with me, you'd have to admit that the Word of God and the Spirit of God do not appeal to the outward man.
Your flesh does not like what the Scriptures say. That was Solomon's problem. And he chose the wrong thing. He chose the flesh over the Spirit. God's going to speak to our hearts. Satan will come at you externally with all types of appeals and deceptions and enticements. Today we call that marketing. It's done in the secular world, but it's also done in the religious world. If you don't believe it, turn on your TV to some Christian program, and as they call it, and see how much marketing is done. All it is is enticing you, trying to get you to buy something you don't need, or to give donations just for somebody else to live high on the hog, so to speak. How much is being done for God? Be cautious with all this. God appeals with truth. Satan appeals with lies and deception. God invites. Satan tempts. God's never tempted me to do anything. Nor you. Right? But He invites us. So, under the influence of something you're not going to avoid, you're under it right now. And so am I. And I'll choose tomorrow which influence I'm under. Every day I'll choose that influence. I highly recommend that we get under the influence of God. And that's done through His Word, through His Spirit, listening to Him, talking to Him. You understand? People that are void of uh, spiritual alertness, I'll say, are going to gravitate toward the wrong influence. You with me? If you're not alert to the Spirit, if you're ignorant of the Scriptures, you're going to go with the wrong influence. Because you won't know truth. And because you don't know truth, you have nothing to compare the things that are coming at you. You have nothing to compare to. But if I know truth, then I'm hearing a suggestion, I can compare that to the Word and know whether to go that direction or not. You follow me? That's why it's so important to know the Scriptures. Wrong influence will produce a bad outcome. It'll lead one away from the Lord. But right influence will produce a positive outcome and it'll lead one to the Lord. Now, you choose the direction you go. Follow I can't blame nobody for any choices I make in my life. I have to take the responsibility and manage this body that God's entrusted me with. Amen. So let's come under godly influence. Let's subject ourselves more and more to the Word of God and to the Spirit of God to where we're understanding the ways of God and implement. Amen. That's the message. Father, I thank you that you bless us indeed. You enlarge our territory. Your hands with us to keep us from evil so that we do not cause pain. And I thank you for blessing us and keeping us and for making your face to shine upon us and being gracious unto us. You lift up your countenance upon us and you give us peace. So, Lord, we gladly invite you to rise up, to let your enemies be scattered, and let those who hate you flee before you. Amen. Amen. Amen.